Hey everyone, welcome back to another video from A Man Talks FPL. In today's video, we're gonna go through my Game Week 22 team selection. Game Week 22 is a double Game Week, so there's lots to discuss in terms of what I'm looking to do with the team. So if you guys enjoyed the video, really appreciate a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And if you haven't seen my previous channel updates video, I've actually now created my separate channel for NRL Supercoach videos for any of my existing subscribers who did watch that content. I'll put links for that in the description below, so do check that out as well, and do subscribe to that as well if you wanna see some of that content. But let's get into the FPL Game Week 22 team selection. So taking a quick look at how I went in Game Week 21 first. So I scored 81 points, which was 85 points with a minus four hit. So this week I brought in both Craig Dawson and Jared Bond from West Ham, really trying to attack that double game week as they did have a pretty good looking one with Crystal Palace and Norwich and it really did pay off. So Jared Bond is definitely covering any cracks in the team with his massive 21 point haul, scoring a brace against Norwich and picking up that you know, pretty lucky assist um, against Crystal Palace. So 42 points in total for him was amazing. Looking at the back there, Ramsdale, just the one point, pretty tough matchup against Man City, uh, but Arsenal did look very, very impressive. So Martinelli, who you can see on my bench there with his two points, he really could have scored more than that. So I'm actually looking to potentially hold him for the long term because he looked very impressive and his underlying stats are very good as well. In the defenders, we've got Dawson with the seven points, obviously conceding against Crystal Palace, but the clean sheet against Norwich, so seven points there, happy with that. Um, Cancelo, only the two points as Arsenal did score. And Trent with the four points, picking up an assist against Chelsea. So Son with six points, getting assist against Watford, although he is now red flagged. Jota, five points, getting an assist as well in that game against Chelsea. Um, and Bernardo Silva also getting an assist um, you know, in that game against Arsenal. So a lot of my players were getting assists by, by the look of it. Antonio with nine points, so he did score against Crystal Palace, but just blanked against Norwich. He looked very threatening in some plays, but Bowen definitely looked much better than him. So I am happy that I captained Bowen. Um, King, just a blank as well against Spurs, who's defensively have looked pretty tight. Um, and Ronaldo, again, a pretty disappointing um, effort there from Manchester United. So they're not looking the best at the moment, but we've got Ronaldo with the double game week coming up. So I'm not looking to probably move him out, um, at least for game week 22. It was a green arrow up to 16.8k from around 21k so happy with the green arrow back inside the top 20k got all my chips in play as well so let's see what I'm looking to do for game week 22. So as it stands, there's quite a few flags uh, in my team there. You can see Trent has got the yellow flag, as has Ronaldo and Foster and Livermento. Although I have a feeling that Ronaldo and Trent are probably both going to be okay. So Trent has been back in training for Liverpool and Ronaldo's reason for missing the FA Cup fixture against Villa was some kind of muscle discomfort, but it sounded pretty minor. So I'm hopeful that he's going to be playing both of his fixtures um, against Aston Villa and Brentford in the double game week. And he is currently my captain. Josh King up forward, uh, you know, Newcastle way, Burnley way, great fixture. Not looking to make a swap of King to Dennis, so he's kind of got the vice captain as well. Son would have been probably my captain, but he's now injured and it has been confirmed that he's going to be out for the rest of the month. So he's probably not going to come back until around Southampton. He's probably going to miss the game against Chelsea and obviously double game in 22. So he's probably definitely someone I'm going to be looking at as one of my transfer outs this week, unfortunately. Not something we planned for, but that's just how the game goes. Some players with very good single game week fixtures in the team as well. So you've got Antonio and Bowen at home to Leeds. Great fixture from an attacking point of view. And then you've got Jota and Trent at home to Brentford, who conceded four to Southampton. So I'm very hopeful for their prospects in this double game week. I've got Ben Davies at the back there with a double game week. So in total at the moment, I've got just the three in terms of Ben Davies, uh, Josh King and Ronaldo. With one of my intended transfers uh, taking Son out, I probably will look to go for another double game week midfielder, although the options aren't great, but we will get into some and some of the ones that I have been considering. I've got Bernardo Silva at home to Chelsea as as I do with uh, Jao Cancelo. At the moment, I'm tossing up whether to play Martinelli or Bernardo Silva. At the moment, I'm actually thinking maybe I should switch it to Martinelli because he's probably got better underlying stats and I don't think Tottenham are as good as a defense um, as Chelsea, even though City's attack is obviously better than Arsenal. Maybe I'll, may, I might make that late switch. And I should probably mention that I'm not looking to free hit in this particular game week because I'm just not too excited by, I guess, any of the teams that do have the double game week. And I feel like I've got enough coverage in the sense that I've got Ronaldo, I've got a Watford forward, I've got a Spurs defender in the likes of Ben Davies. The real player that I'm missing is probably like a David De Gea at the back. You know, it could be some good chance of maybe not necessarily a clean sheet because United haven't been looking the best at the back, but he could get some save points. But, you know, Ramsdale, I don't expect him to keep a clean sheet, but the upside in terms of going from you know, maybe like Ben Foster up to De Gea as well as a minus four, maybe a Son out for a double game with midfielder. I'm just not sure yet if that's what I'm looking to do. So De Gea was someone I did think about. His ownership will be quite high. So I could potentially do that, but it would be putting a lot of money into my goalkeeper spot as well. So the more I've thought about it, the less kind of hot I've gone on in terms of bringing in De Gea for Foster, but still could be a move that I make. But I'm trying to look at my team and prioritize transfers out based on who's the weakest link. 
and Son probably is the weakest link because he's, you know, he's 10 million plus um, and he's going to be out for quite a few games. And I think, you know, attacking the midfielders and the forwards in terms of transfers as opposed to the goalkeeper is probably going to be the better bet. I've got other weak links in the team like Livermento. He's, we're not quite sure yet what the extent of the injury is going to be. So he's probably someone I'm going to look to transfer out sometime soon as well. And so I don't necessarily think goalkeeper is the weak link in my team. And so in the next part of the video, what I'll do is I'll go into some of the double gaming midfielders that I have been considering in terms of replacing Huming Son. And then after that, I'll jump onto the main FPL page and just do a little bit of tinkering because I've got some extra thoughts that I probably want to show a little bit easier on the main website. So in terms of a double game week midfielder replacements for Son, these were the five players that I did consider in terms of James Madison, Bruno Fernandes, Lucas Moura, Mason Mount, and Leo Trossard. So as I mentioned, I'm not looking to free hit, so this definitely does weigh in my thinking in terms of which of the midfielders I want to go for, because I'm not going to look to play the free hit. I don't want to bring in a midfielder who's got bad fixtures um, after the double game week. So a couple of players do kind of fall into this category. So Lucas Moura and Mason Mount, they don't have the best fixtures after their double game week. So I'm not looking as keen on the likes of Mora and Mount um, and Trossard as well. He does have a blank coming up also in Game Week 24. And so in all honesty, I've been mainly considering, you know, James Madison or Bruno Fernandes, as crazy as it sounds, because Fernandes has not been the best um, option so far this season, apart from that Game Week 1 hat-trick that he scored. But I think it's an interesting discussion point as to whether, you know, you kind of stay in that price point of going really premium with like a Bruno Fernandes, maybe even a KDB or like a Raheem Sterling, because that maybe enables you to get back to Salah uh, a little bit easier. So speaking on Salah briefly as well, it seems as though he's probably going to be back around Game Week 24, otherwise Game Week 25 at the latest. And in those in that in that period of time, they've got Leicester, Burnley, and Norwich. You're really going to want Salah. So I've, I'm trying to think ahead a little bit in terms of the trades that I make now. How can I make sure that they still help me get back to Salah um, with relative ease? And so I have considered going with someone like a Fernandez, who's got that premium price. So it's a little bit easier to go up to Salah. But I'm just not too keen on Fernandez because I'm just not impressed overall with United. I've already got Ronaldo. Having both Fernandez and Ronaldo seems like overkill, even though it is a decent double game of Aston Villa away and Brentford away. Mainly for the Brentford away fixture, I do think Aston Villa will be a tough team, and I probably do think that Villa will actually win um, that game. Just looking at Bruno Fernandez's his stats as well. He's got a 0.46 expected goal involvement without penalties. So he is kind of actually performing relatively in line with his expected goal involvement so far this season. But Madison, he's, a, he's cheaper, a lot cheaper, 6.9 million in the bank. And having that spare money, I could just keep that in the bank and use that as a kind of stepping stone back to sell up. It doesn't really make that big of a difference. And I think just on face value, Madison to me looks like a better option than Bruno because Obviously, price is one thing, but I do think the double game fixture is still pretty good, um, mainly for that Burnley away fixture. His underlying stats are better than Bruno's as well. 0.51 expected goal involvement with a much higher expected goals, which is uh, 0.32 uh, versus Bruno's 0.19. Um, and then in terms of the actual goals and assists per 90 minutes, he also wins out in that regard as well. So Madison is definitely the midfielder that I have been considering the most as a replacement for Huming Son. Just touching on the other three as well. So Mora's stats haven't been too bad either. 0.38 non-penalty expected goal involvement. Mason Mount actually has the best underlying stats of 0.66. The problem is that his double game fixture of Man City and Brighton, both games away, they're two good defences and I don't think the upside is quite there. And the problem with Chelsea is that they've got Tottenham in game 23 and then they've got a blank in 24 and probably what looks like another blank in game 25. So I think me doing a transfer in, I just don't think Mount is the right option. And in terms of Trossard, I think overall Brighton attack, I don't really trust that much, although Leicester attack is a good attack. So that's kind of why I'm leaning towards, you know, Madison as my Son replacement. Just quickly also touching on other Leicester midfielders as a bit of a comparison, because I do know that others have been considering maybe even a double up of Leicester mids, you know, say, for example, if you are on a free hit, um, you know, Personally, I'm not, I'm not going to go for a double up and I'm definitely not going to consider any of these other three. I think Madison is the standout. His underlying stats are better, as you can see from the table there. Hillman's is an interesting prospect given that he has got penalties, but his open play goal involvement isn't the best, 0.39. Uh, Harvey Barnes as well, he could play a little bit more centrally and further forward, but his underlying stats aren't the best either. Lookman is interesting. His underlying stats are pretty decent. The problem is that we think that DACA is going to be actually available for Leicester. So again, this is one of those things where you kind of need to just wait for information from press conferences. If DACA is available, then potentially Lookman, who has been occupying a bit of a false nine, he could maybe just get shifted out wide. And Madison, I think, has already been playing further forward as well. So for me, Madison is the best replacement for Son and also probably the best pick out of the Leicester midfielders because I do know that there was a bit of discussion around you know, which of the Leicester mids to go for. So for me personally, I would vouch for Madison. 
What I'll jump onto now though is the main FPL page and just provide some extra tinkering in my other thoughts that I've got. So here's my team on the main FPL page. As you can see, I've got one free transfer and 2.5 million in the bank. So quite a bit to play with, but I am conscious that having that money in the bank will help get Salah um, from gaming 24 onwards. And so Son to Madison, as I kind of discussed, was the move that I was intending to make. And probably, you know, if we have confirmation that the Leicester game actually does go forward, because obviously they've had issues in terms of postponements, um, you know, a lot of injuries, um, players going away on AFCON duty. So I definitely want to wait as long as possible to find out that that Leicester game is on. But if it is confirmed and, you know, they can play against Burnley especially, then I probably will bring in uh, Madison because he's got Brighton the following game week. So I don't mind playing him uh, in that particular game week. So I think for at least the next two or three game weeks, I don't think he's a horrible option. And so that then leaves me a lot of money in the bank. You can see there, 6.2 million uh, to play with. Now, I kind of touched on it previously in that there's other players in my team who I'm not entirely happy with that I might, you know, I view as definitely as weak links. So Livermento is one of them. And so I definitely want to look to potentially bolster him in, term, in terms of making him a proper third defender because at the moment I've got Trent and Cancelo as my primary ones. And then I've got Davies, Dawson and Livermento. Now Dawson, I don't have that much faith to be honest in West Ham's defense. So but there are a couple of teams that do have some nice fixture swings as well from game week 23. So City is a big one. So we can see from game week 23, City go into a little nice run of Southampton, Brentford, Norwich, then the Spurs, Everton. But even then long term, it's still very nice in terms of fixtures. So I could potentially from next week onwards want to potentially double up on the City defense because I do think that they are the best defense to target from a FPL perspective. So that would leave me enough money to go from Livermento up to the likes of like a Laporte um, or even to a Diaz, for example. But another team that I am conscious of as well is Aston Villa. But Aston Villa also go into a nice run of games from Gaming 23. So they've obviously brought in Coutinho. Um, so he's a bit of a superstar signing for them. And then you've got Luca Dean as well from Everton. So they've got a couple of nice players coming in. And I do really think that they are a defense first team. Well, that's what it looks like with the likes of Gerard managing the team. So I am interested in potentially getting either a Luca Dean or maybe even a Maddie Cash as well from Game Week 23. As you can see, the fixtures for Aston Villa are pretty good in the long term, especially from Game Week 23 onwards. The thing with Aston Villa as well is that in another slide that I'll briefly show later on, they've got a very good chance of actually having a double Game Week in 23. So I don't want to necessarily force out the likes of Livermento for one of the double Game Week 22 players who don't have great fixtures moving forward. Instead, I can wait a week and you know still field a very good 11 and potentially target either a Man City defender or maybe an Aston Villa defender. And then potentially what I could do in my midfield is that when Madison's fixtures get a little bit tougher from around Game Week 24 when they're versus Liverpool, I can then convert him potentially to a, you know, maybe an Aston Villa midfielder. So we mentioned Coutinho. I could even look to bring in the likes of a Phil Foden back in as well and potentially maybe go a double Man City attack. But I'm not sure that that's the best approach. I think I'd prefer going with a double City uh, defense. So for example, in Game Week 23, my team could look a little bit like this where I bring in like a Matty Cash and maybe like a Phil Foden as well. And then that starts setting the team up nicely for the long term as well with some nice players from Game Week 23 onwards and getting in players like uh, Matty Cash who do potentially have a double Game Week as well in 23. So that's my current thinking in terms of what I'm looking to do. I don't want to look too far forward in terms of uh, you know planning because we just know with COVID postponements, there's so many, so many things could change. But what I essentially, I can't, my take home message, I guess, is, is that I'm just not looking to force in too many double Game Week 22 players or maybe take too many hits. I've taken a lot of hits recently as well. And I think this particular week, maybe I need to calm it a little bit and instead play a little bit more conservatively you know, there's going to be kind of a lot of double game weeks, I think, randomly thrown at us. So I kind of want to react in terms of having a good overall squad structure, you know, thinking ahead in terms of there are going to be some teams that I think might have a good chance of a double game week. So maybe prioritize those, but not look so far forward that I'm going to start booking in trances as well. So I think for this week, it's probably just going to be that one single move of Son to Madison. Maybe take an extra minus four of a Ben Foster up to like a David De Gea, but I'm just not quite sure yet if that's the right play to take the minus four when I can easily just play a Ramsdale. It might not be that much upside in going with a goalkeeper transfer. So that's what I'm kind of thinking for the team for Game Week 22. And finally, just touching on kind of chip strategy because I know this is something that a lot of people will think about. So as I mentioned, I don't think I'm looking to play the free hit for 22. I do think that there are going to be other good opportunities. So you can see there, Game Week 27 is one that I have thought about because there is a fixture of Liverpool versus Arsenal. And in that particular game week, there will be the Carabao Cup final. Now, Liverpool and Arsenal are both in the semi-final, so one of those two teams is going to get to the final. Therefore, that fixture is likely to get postponed. But as you can see in Ben Crellin's uh, second tweet on the right there, it's not necessarily definitely going to be a blank, but there's maybe a chance that it's a blank. And so that actually might be a week that I look to free hit because I'll probably have you know three Liverpool players in terms of like Salah, Trent, and maybe Jota. And I'll probably still have the likes of a Ramsdale and a Martinelli. So it's already five players that I might lose. And in that particular week, there are some teams that have got good fixtures as well. So 
free hit 27 is something that I have thought about so I kind of want to save the free hit for that week maybe maybe I can use another one again in game week 30 when there's going to be a bigger blank game week because of FA Cup postponements but we know that from game week 33 to 36 there's going to be other kind of smaller double game weeks so there could be other opportunities to play the free hit there as well and so I just want to kind of quickly circle back as well to Ben's first tweet that I've uh, added there and that game week 23 will likely be a double game week Aston Villa are one of those teams that probably have a better chance of it and so the likely double game week fixture they would have would be Aston Villa versus Everton and then Aston Villa versus Burnley so it's a really nice double game week so that's kind of again why I'm looking to maybe be a little bit more conservative in this particular game week and then that could be a game week that I can really target bring in like a cash and also maybe even looking to bring in like an Ollie Watkins as well so that's it guys that is a game week 22 team selection I tried to make the video a little bit shorter but I just have a tendency to start rambling and going through so many things but there's a lot of thoughts in my head around FPL I'm sure plenty of you guys out there empathize with that as well so hopefully if you enjoy the video really appreciate a thumbs up do please consider subscribing to the channel as well if you want to see more content like this throughout the rest of the season. But I'll see you all in the next video.